the match of the round between Harlequins and Melbourne Unicorns out here at Quinns. And I'm your host today, Gerard McLenahan. Joining me this week is Stan Giles. Welcome back, Stan. Thanks, Guy G. And we're moments away from kickoff, but in honour of NADOC week, uh, there will be a brief welcome to country. Brought to you by Dr. Julie Andrews. This is Melbourne. There's no changes to Queens at the moment. Our ancestors, our grandmothers, our mothers, our aunties, our sisters, our friends, our family, 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 our of our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women. It is because of the strong women in my life, my family, my community, that I stand here today and do the acknowledgement for the Jewish year on behalf of the tradi- traditional owners of the land on which we stand today. Today we pay our respect and acknowledgement to the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of this land. Jersey numbers. We recognise their elders, past and present, and acknowledge their future generations to come. It is a real privilege to be here with you today. The Wurundjeri Woiwurrung laws based on two loyalties. And they are the bunjil, the eagle, and the wang, the crow. Many of you know the Yarra River here in Melbourne. It is the meeting place of the Wurundjeri Wurrung people and four other tribal groups named the Bunurong, the Jarjarurong, the Wathurong, and the Tungurong. Together, these five tribes formed the Kulin Nation. The Kulin Nation met for cultural ceremony and gatherings such as sport like today. So we also acknowledge the tribes of the Kulin Nation today. All the best with the game players. Enjoy the game everyone. Thank you. Thank you Dr Julie Andrews. Play well. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Welcome to country. We're just a minute away from kickoff between one and two on the Jewish Shield ladder for 2018. Melbourne v Quinns in a highly anticipated battle. Of course, both teams have only recorded one loss each for the entire season. That loss coming last weekend for Melbourne when they went down in a quite a shock loss to Box Hill Broncos. And I'll quickly read through the starting 15 for Melbourne. We have Casey Harris, Tim Orchard, Uisi Manu, S.A. Hungana, Frederick Austin, George Noah, Matthew Nabulatasi, Sakurai Noah, Fagasoa, Vaivai, Fa'atau, Lifau, Tupo, Liotta and Sunny at fullback. Quinns will get through in just a moment as Breen gets us underway with the kickoff. And immediately we have a turnover. Van Zeel, Breen feeds it out the back to Hunter Paisami who puts the grubber kick through. Straight back to Sunny in the backfield for Melbourne. And the referee has blown it up. Big game here, Stan. It is a big game this afternoon at uh, Harlequin Park. Uh, Viewers, the weather conditions couldn't be better for rugby. Uh, Lovely blue sky, sun shining, very little wind, very good coverage on the the rugby pitch. No rain, no many spots, uh, and not a very good start from Melbourne on that instant. Uh, Knocking on at the the restart.
and also an aimless kick midfield. The starting pack for Quinns today is Darren Dean, Henry Platt and Angus Arundel. Second rowers are Coco and Verbote and the back row is Thwaites, Tarfau and Collio. Off the back, starting it off, Bill Valentini with the run, gets the offload to Lloyd Johansson who crashes over and try inside the opening two minutes to inside centre, Lloyd Johansson and Quinns have struck immediately. Costly error there from the kickoff stand and it's hurt Melbourne straight away. It is in Melbourne, that was a very soft try. Uh, running around on, on the flank, uh, found a gap. Uh, easily meters, soft tackle, defence line wasn't in position, the D-line was all out of shape. Uh, a very soft try there to Quinns and uh, Melbourne uh, uh, are just not settled into this game at all uh, in the first uh, two minutes of the match. Interesting shape from the scrum. We saw Billy Valentini feed the scrum and the scrum and regular halfback uh, and Van Zeel out on the left wing. So they had a special play in mind that they were happy to show off in the first two minutes of the game. And as I speak, Breen steps back to take the first conversion of the match. He makes no mistake, and the score goes out to 7-0 after three minutes here at Quinns. Fast start indeed for Quinns. And I'll quickly go through the Quinns backline for today. We have Ant Van Ziel at half, Peter Breen, Afisa, Johansson, the Valentini brothers at centre and right wing, and Hunter Paisami at fullback. Kick just makes the 10, but it's a knock on by Coco. And Melbourne get the turnover. Tuller. Vai Vai, big hit there on Tupo. Quick pick and go from Ifa. Tala. One off crash ball to the prop. Harris. They go down the short side through Nabalatasi, but it's a loose carry. And the referee playing advantage there for an offside. So we saw the first mistake from Melbourne from a kickoff, and Harlequins didn't learn the lesson. and Having a bit of trouble there as well with the restart, Stan. Yeah, very unusual. There's no excuses for that. Uh, it was a nice, high, loping kick um, restart. And um, uh, both sides just testing each other out at the moment, I think, G. Uh, Melbourne through the hands just to test the Quinn's defence. Uh, just a little bit suspect uh, on the wing. Uh, and then came a very uh, soft turnover. Now, for those of you following at home, fly half Vi Vi. It's actually in jersey 28 for Melbourne today. And the big man in number 25 is actually the left wing Arthur. And Melbourne mauled inside the 22 from their opening line out of the game. Being held at the back by Orchard. And Orchard peels off. And penalised for not releasing there. And I fancy it might be his opposite number, Dean Platt there, who has affected the breakdown turnover, the breakdown penalty rather. But that first rolling ball looked rather ominous, Stan. It did look ominous. In fact, they, uh, they crabbed it across the field some 20 metres, perhaps just when it started to break up. Uh, that's when the ball should have been released. Uh, and the player went to ground, and of course, uh, stacks on the mill, couldn't release it. Um, I sort of thought that may have well been a maul, uh, been a turnover, but no, Quinns have reaped the penalty. Breen finds touch just short of halfway as the ball almost hits the commentary team. And this come out, this uh, this line out will be interesting uh, with Quinns uh, uh, throwing in. No Zach Dixon today. Uh, uh, their their line out jumper, Quinns line out jumper. He's in New Zealand, and as I say that, it's over the back. And big S.A. Hunganar takes his first carry of the game, crashes it up to the 40. Vaivai throws it out the back to Liafa, and they work it to the right touchline, flirting with the right touchline, in fact. Tuller goes digging for the ball. Good counter ruck there from Kemu Valentini, but, ooh, bit of a stink. Here we go. And the 
ref blows it up. Just uh, letting off a little bit of steam there, a lot of frustration. This is a very important game. The winner of this match will probably win the minor premiership. Uh, Melbourne on the ladder, just uh, one point in front of Quinns after the shock lost uh, last week to, uh, to Box Hill. And um, uh, there's a lot of tension out there, so uh, I don't ex so expect some more uh, physicality uh, at the breakdown. Oli Kellett, referee, calls out the two captains, Noah from Melbourne and Angus Arundel from Queens. Just have a bit of a chat. And, of course, Oli Kellett today celebrating his 200th match in charge as referee. So congratulations to Oli, one of the, uh, the real talents of Victorian rugby out there. And you don't get to 200 matches uh, without having a little bit of talent, do you there, Stan? No, not at all. What a great servant to the clubs, a former Colts player, uh, with Harlequins and uh, Melbourne, uh, beautiful uh, touch finder there. Uh, this sets up, I think, Guy, for a rolling maul. They've already walked Quinns back earlier on after about four minutes, and uh, we'll, I'll expect the same here. Orchard goes to the line, five metres out with the throw. Stan's picked it, rolling maul. Let's see how well they execute it. They go up to Noah in the middle. Try to sack it straight away. They've done a pretty good job there, Quinns. They align for the pick and go. Arthur takes the first carrier. Noah with the second pick and go. Harris, the other front rower. Keen to keep it in tight here, Melbourne. SA Hungana reaches out, and the young 19 year old has responded almost immediately for Melbourne. And Melbourne have struck back seven points to five in favour of Quinns. And I would say there that Quinns uh, uh, D-line, they tried to, to, to flop onto the ball. That pick and drive from Melbourne. Melbourne, a big forward pack. Uh, we're just too, uh, too good to edge over the line. But it all started from um, uh, a missed line out uh, back near halfway. Uh, cross field. Uh, Quinns um, uh, giving away a penalty, great touch finder into the corner and as we said a rolling maul was nicely set up. I thought the uh, Quinns had actually um, uh, collapsed that maul, uh, referee played on, uh, the ball squandered loose and um, uh, it was all over. Yeah, I fancy it was Vi Vi who took that, that touch finder which set it, set it up with that banana kick of his and that's obviously what established the field position. So. Well, I thought this would be a tight scoring game, but this could very well be a shootout. Two scores within the first six minutes of the game. Kick unsuccessful. So the scores will remain at 7-5. Now, stuffed up the first kickoff, reception Melbourne, take two. Fancy Breen will be trying to land it in the exact same spot and see if they've learnt their lessons from the first kickoff. Breen. High into the left. Austin goes up. Much better effort this time. And Austin breaks through. Austin gets into the backfield. Looks for support. Loose carry and Hunter Paisami with the intercept. Tackled by Noah. And they get the men there to secure the breakdown. Slow ball low for Quinns. Crashing it up is Thwaites. Just short of the halfway line. Van Ziel goes right. Sime Colio. Van Ziel, one pass left. Out to the left. Lloyd Johansson this time with the strong carry. Quinns just need to be patient here to work the ball through the hands. Take the tackle, lay it back. Hunter Paisami rolls it up within 30. Beautiful follow-up crash ball by Platt. They've got all the momentum now, Quinns. And as I say that, there's a turnover. Sonny with the clearing kick from inside his 22. Can't go out on the full. Finds Paisami. Long pass into the middle of the field to Ofisa. Ofisa cuts back down the short side. Fancy feet there. Gets him up to halfway. Van Ziel goes digging. Finds Breen. Breen off the left foot on this occasion. Tries to get it in behind. Null and that is a wonderful kick 
and he'll find touch. Eight, seven, six, five metres out from Melbourne's line. Beautiful left boot there from Breen. Yeah, that was well executed and uh, as I speak there is a slight breeze blowing down into that corner. It's just getting up now as we speak. Uh, but Bream, a beautiful tactical kicking game uh, as he did when he was playing ITM Cup in, uh, in New Zealand with Northland. Great acquisition for Quinns and uh, uh, this has set Quinns up with a very good opportunity. Orchard has a word with the pack. Full eight man line out here for Melbourne on their own five metre line. They go to Austin. Austin claims it. Bit of a maul. Trying to get a get those Quinns defenders on the back foot before they look to exit. Nulla. Straight into the pocket finds Vai Vai. And referee has blown a penalty for offside. So the exit will get a little bit easier here for Melbourne. As Vai Vai will take a kick five metres out from his own try line and an opportunity to relieve a little bit of pressure here for the Unicorns. Yeah, Quinn's getting into their old habits here. That's three penalties uh, in just the first eight or nine minutes. Uh, you just can't do this at this level. Quinn's are always quick out of the box. Uh, every game this year, they've all led at half time. Uh, and then squandered those, squandered a good lead in the first half uh, to ill discipline in the second half. So we'll see what happens here with this line out. Um, uh, short line out here. Short Melbourne line have out left four. out Nabulatasi and Hunganar in the backfield. They go long. Nulla, Vai Vai, inside ball, looks to find the Yota. Coming around the corner is Noah. Nulla with options left and right. Ooh, turnover Hunter Paisami with the turnover. The referee hasn't called it up. There was a clear forward pass there. But he'll go back for the original knock-on by Atta, the big number three. And Quinns will have a chance to assume a little bit of set-piece dominance here. They've had a very good scrum throughout the year, one of the best in the competition. 40 metres out, 10 metres in from the right-hand touchline. And they've placed all of their backs, including the right wing of Fisa on the left-hand side of the scrum. I think we uh, see a rehearsed move here. Van Ziel finds Breen, takes it to the line, show and go from Breen. Nubble Atassi with the tackle over the top. Green goes left again. The Bote crashing it up. Recycles. Van Ziel a little bit lost there as players struggle to get around the corner, but Platt assumes a little bit of control with that carry. Van Ziel. Short side again through Thwaites. But the ball has gone forward, so. Melbourne let off the hook there. And as I say that, a man for Quinns has gone down. You can't catch who that is, can you, Stan? No, I just can't see from here. Um, oh. Fancy it might be one of the front rowers, a, possibly it's Dean. Someone in uh, front. No, he's not lying. He's on his, uh, on his back. Um, just a bit scrappy from both sides at the moment. A couple of uh, turnovers, uh, drop pass. Uh, if we had a forward pass in an attacking position. Um, yeah, just a wee bit scrappy. I think these sides are settling down. They know the importance of the result. And um, uh, Quinn's just with a little bit of advantage. One thing we haven't seen yet is Quinn's get nice, quick, clean ball uh, to work the ball right along their back line. Get all the backs to handle the ball early. Give them confidence. Um, Melbourne is standing a little bit flat in their back line. Uh, their backs, so they're creating the bust uh, opportunities early in the piece. And um, uh, whilst it hasn't worked, they've certainly had the better of the possession, but not of uh, not of the field. And as we watch Dean get to his feet, well, it doesn't look like he can put any sort of pressure on that right ankle of his. So. It looks like he's being taken to the sideline. That's going to force the first interchange of the game. And it 
looks like Davis may be the man to come on in his place. So we hope it's not too serious there for Dean. He's been one of the linchpins of this forward pack this season, and it's probably been one of the most dominant scrums in the whole Jewel Shield. So with finals just around the corner, you hope that's nothing too serious there. So I will get confirmation shortly, but it does look like Davis has come on to replace Dean, and that looks like Dean's day is done, unfortunately. This puts more pressure on, uh, on the Quinns forward pack last week against Powerhouse. Uh, when the Quinns changed their front row, uh, the whole game took a different complexion. Quinns were outclassed in the scrums. They were pushed all over the place by Powerhouse in the last 10 to 15 minutes, and Powerhouse nearly pulled off a great win. We'll just see how the scrum now goes uh, with a new front, with a new uh, prop. And uh, easily won by uh, Van Seal. Into Davis, and uh, straight away they get a tight head. And that's Ofisa crashing it up. Coming through the side, it looks like they're Lee Fowl. And he'll be penalised for that, but they'll go back to the original scrum penalty. And the change of prop hasn't seemed to hurt Harlequins at all. Davis thrown straight into the middle of it and comes up with the good straight away. So penalty here to Quinns. 26 metres out, 5 metres in from touch. Maybe just beyond Breen's range and perhaps a little bit too early in the game to be going for the three. So he'll steer this into the left corner. And Quinns will have the line out about 8 metres out from touch. Now it'll be interesting to see what sort of line out Quinns call here. Uh, without Zach uh, Dixon, their money man in the line, and also uh, Gus Hamilton, uh, he's overseas at the moment. So their number one locks are missing. Uh, we've already seen a wayward throw from the Quinn's uh, hooker. Uh, this is quite an important uh, opportunity. They go up through Thwaites, and Melbourne aren't able to sack it straight away. Eventually it goes down. Van Ziel. Out the back to Breen. Inside ball finds Coco. Right again they go. Inside ball to the new man. And Davis says, how do you like that? He's been on the field for one minute, Stan. And one tight head. Scrum win and five points. Welcome to first grade. Oh, what a lovely result there for Quinns. They'll be pretty happy about that because... Um, uh, in defence, they were just looking a little bit shaky, but uh, it was Melbourne there that were found wanting. Uh, running across field, the gaps appear, but the cover just wasn't there for Melbourne. And um, uh, that was quite a, another soft try through the defence. Uh, I'm sure uh, uh, the uh, Melbourne coach will be trying to sort that out. And the players are now gathered beyond, but beside the upright to discuss what's going wrong there. That's two tries we've had uh, through... Um, uh, within 10 metres of the breakdown or their set play. Interesting comparison there. So you get the five metre line out from Melbourne and they were content to go for the pick and go, pick and go, and after four pick and goes they scored. Harlequins playing the game a little bit more off nine, so a wider pass off the ruck when they got within five metres of the line and it was the inside ball from Platt, I think it was, to his front row buddy Davis, which came up with the good. So Quinn's showing a willingness to play a little bit more expansive, and we'll see if that continues throughout the game. Conversion successful. That brings the scores 14 points to 5 in favour of Quinn's. Tuller, ball back for Melbourne here as Orchard crashes it up. Same Collio with the tackle. One off to the left goes Harris, or right rather. This time we find Austin. Tuller with the little box kick, trying to catch Hunter Paisami out. And offside. So, ooh. Tupo there, thought about the quick tap. I don't think anyone else in the Melbourne team was expecting that. And... Vivi will assume the ball and plug it into the right corner. Not as close as last kick, was it, Stan? No, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it'll set up Melbourne nicely here. I think they'll take the, the other option and work it through their backs. Um, uh, that's the way that I would see this uh, 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 moving forward. 
Ball goes to the back to Noah. Cheeky little play inside to Nubilatasi, and he finds the big charging number five, Austin. And how do you like that for a comeback? Well, we're heading for a high-scoring game by the looks of it now. Uh, Navasati, big, tall man, uh, took the ball towards the back there, and it was easy after that. He, he shrugged off uh, one tackle, uh, only had to run five or six, eight metres uh, to, to score that. Um, Quinn's defence was found wanting. Mind you, they were locked into that line out, but uh, I thought that throw was a loose throw. I don't think it was intended for the, for the back of the line. I may well be mistaken, but um, they've got the result. And change of kicker already. Null of the halfback, or Tulla, sorry, um, will take over. Slightly easier attempt than the first one. One step, two step, two points. 14 points to 12 in favour of Quinns and quite and that, a lot of points scored already. What was predicted to be a relatively low scoring game today. And um, you know, I think the penalty count already is six against Quinns and two against Melbourne. So Quinns have got to sharpen up their discipline. Uh, each penalty uh, that they've been given away has resulted in tries to Melbourne from their continuous play. And Platt has stolen the kickoff going over the head of Austin. So two errors already from the Melbourne team from restarts. Lloyd Johansson crashing it up. Well, Van Ziel couldn't find the desired runner there, but Valentini picks it up and takes the crumbs. Van Ziel thwaites with the show and go. Solid clean out by the hooker, Platt. Van Ziel out the back, Breen. Samay Collio with the offload. Looking for Verbote, but it resulted in a knock-on. So Melbourne will have the advantage here, and S.A. Hunganar has got the ball. Quick pick and go there from Noah. Tuller finds Austin. Tuller to the left through big S.A. Cut out pass. And here goes Uffa down the left touch line. Finds his inside centre, Leifau, back to Uffa. And Uffa has dropped the cookie. Enterprising play there, but it comes to nothing. And Harlequins will have the ball just on their side of halfway. Nabulatasi with the high tackle there. Waits, recycles. Van Seal goes digging. Finds Hunter Paisami at first receiver. Breen out the back. Short little chip kick. Tries to find... Big number 14, Billy Valentini, but it beats him into touch. And they look dangerous there down the left edge, didn't they? Melbourne, when the big man, who was that, Arthur, Arthur, got a bit of a roll on. No, he did, and uh, that chip kick, uh, this is the bounce of the rugby ball. If that had bounced straight up and Valentini had taken it, uh, put your binoculars down. But that's just the bounce of the ball, uh, and it went into touch from that chip kick. A great Opportunity for Quinns that just didn't come off to the bounce of that rugby ball. Orchard goes to the middle. Tala, Vivi -vi, looks for that inside ball and cutting straight through is Leota. Leota gets into the backfield. Quick pick and go finds Austin. SA with the offload. Wide ball to Sunny. Gets jammed by Hunter Paisami. Does a good job of slowing down the breakdown. There's Quinns players on the wrong side of the ruck there and they'll be penalised for that. And Tuller opts to slow it down. And they're forced with an interesting choice here. Do they go for the three points and the opportunity to take the lead? They're down 14-12 at the moment. But Vi Vi, the fly half, points to the touchline. And they'll look to give their forward pack another opportunity to execute that rolling mall here. A good option to take at this stage of the game. Absolutely. So he finds touch. Five metres out. Radar-like boot does Vivi have. And the forwards, looks like all eight forwards going to the line-out. Look for Austin in the middle here, number five. Now will this go to the back, uh, to Narasani, or will it go in its Austin the back Austin overthrow. overthrow. 
Overthrow to Austin, and Harlequins are led off there with Ofisa coming away with the pill. And they get it to the 22. Collio, long ball to Paisami. Paisami with the show and go. Drop ball there, the referee calls it backwards. And Kimu Valentini gets bundled back, so they've lost a few metres on the play there, have Quince. And the ball has spilled over into the touchline. Touch judge calling a throw to Melbourne here, but uh, they did the, the good work of getting the turnover from the line out stand, but a bit of a loose carry out there on the left edge. Yeah, Pasami props went uh, three or four uh, metres too far. And uh, we know that he is one of the great attacking weapons in, uh, in Victorian rugby, a former, or not a former, he's part of the Rebels uh, uh, squad. And um, just went a little bit too far, dropped the ball, the ball went backwards uh, and into touch. Um, Quince just don't seem to be having the confidence in their backs at the moment. They've got no structure there. Um, it's coming from broken play and, um, uh, and, and going backwards. They're used to taking the ball going forwards. Orchard finds Noah in the middle of the line-out. No overthrow this time. Quinns do a great job of sacking it early, though. Orchard thinks about the pick-and-go, but gives it to Tuller. Tuller looks left, looks right. Marshals his forwards around, and there's Big Atta with the one-off carry. Leaving his feet there was S.A. Lucky not to get penalised. Nabulatasi with the carry now. Tuller down the short side. Vai Vai with the grubber kick. And Van Zeel dives on it. So it'll be a 22 metre restart. Good awareness there by the Quinn's halfback to snuff out an opportunity for the right wing Leota. And good options from Melbourne. Uh, they're keeping Quinn's in defence, uh, guessing. Uh, nice little chip kick through. Could have reaped uh, results. They've worked the blind side, uh, they worked it off the back. Uh, they've used their forwards and they've they used their back lines, 1-2, uh, and also uh, the pick and drive. So they're mixing their game up, whereas Quinns have been fairly predictable at this stage. Breen finds Leota, passes to Vaivai. Vaivai brought down just on Quinns' side of halfway. Tuller finds Noah. Nona with, uh, Noah with the carry. Nobletasi with the quick pick and go. Fighting feet, gets an extra three, four metres as Austin looks now to carry. Offload, goes out to Harris. Harris down the right-hand side of the ruck. And I fancy there's a turnover here. Done illegally, though, by big number five, the Bote. So Melbourne with yet another penalty and opportunity to put the ball into the corner here, Stan. Yeah, well, I make that uh, from memory eight penalties to three. Uh, this is not good discipline from Quinns. It's been their Achilles heel all season. Uh, and they just can't keep giving away these penalties to give uh, Melbourne an attacking advantage. Vai Vai pumps it to the right. Yeah, and, and I saw the wind touch. just... Oh yeah, that wind is just drifting across field. The wind grabbed that ball. Uh, but it's a similar position uh, of when Melbourne scored their uh, second try. So about 15 metres out here. Options in the line out are Noah, Austin, SA, Hunganar at the back. They go to the back to Hunganar. Off the back finds Noah, and Noah has fumbled it forward. And yet another let off for Quinns. It was a let off, but they looked dangerous, no, when he took that ball and uh, made some great strides. Um, it's the old one, too, isn't it? They do a few rolling balls and Quinn set up for the sack, and it's the under, unexpected run of Big Noah around the back, which uh, they were looking to to get a one-on-one -on -one match up, you fancy, with the fly half Breen there. Not an easy man to put down is Noah, but uh, loose carry there lets them off the hook. And another quite... chance for the Quinn scrum here to dish out a little bit of punishment to Melbourne. Benzil with the feed. Good shove there by Quinns. Maybe they'll hold it in, play for the penalty. Nope. Collio decides to go himself. Van Zyl into the pocket. Breen doesn't kick himself. Instead, looks for Valentini. And the big left foot of Valentini 
takes the ball up to halfway. That was a beautiful exit there. Quinn's again going backwards, but that beautiful long pass from Bream uh, to Valentini, who did the rest and got it downfield some uh, 45 metres uh, to halfway. A great exit uh, to get them out of trouble and set up um, uh, Melbourne an opportunity. Let's see what happens in this line out here, G. Uh, they're mixing it up. All the, the way back. to the back to Harris, and Harris is fumbled. It's half hour with the turnover. He gets it up to halfway. Pick and go to Platt. Van Ziel into the pocket finds Breen. Breen to Hunter Paisami. Paisami with the fancy feet. Brought down by Nabulatasi. Van Ziel. The Bote with the offload. And they've made it to within 40. Van Ziel goes to Lloyd Johansson. Oh, forward pass there. The crowd gave it away. Yeah, very but strong Melbourne supporter base uh, over there. He'd refereed that uh, pass quite well. Yeah, if that pass had been made maybe 30 metres the other side of halfway, I don't think the crowd would have uh, helped the re referee <laughs> as much there. But a good turnout nevertheless for this top of the table clash. And as you uh, mentioned earlier, Stan, this could very well decide the minor premiers for season 2018. So a lot to play for for both of these clubs. One thing I've noticed here is that Melbourne are only committing one or two players uh, to the breakdown at the tackle zone, uh, which is allowing their uh, forwards to uh, uh, improve the D-line. Um, Quinns might think about going over the top or through Melbourne. Shot by Paisami, and he has hit Tupo very hard, driven him back. Tuller goes for the dart, puts the left foot grubber. Arthur looking for it, and Arthur gets the kick through. No one in front of him. If he can regather here, off the knee. But desperate work there from Ofisa may have saved the day. Arthur looked in for all money, but they got the penalty. Tuller tries to go quick. He does, in fact. And Sonny, the fullback, has fumbled it with inside of the black dot. And wow. Great feet originally shown there from the big man, Arthur, on the left wing for Melbourne. And with no one in front of him, he just had to recollect that ball. How desperate was that defence from Ofisa, though? Oh, it was lovely defence. Uh, uh, more good fortune than skill, I think. He flopped over it and managed to uh, secure the ball. But the error came when Melbourne got the penalty, uh, their ninth penalty, uh, and tried to tap kick it without any thought. Someone lumbered up, saw an opportunity, uh, and wasted a certain three points. Uh, there's an old rule in rugby, uh, G, that I learnt many years ago. If the points are available, always take them. And you're right, if they had taken all of those points on offer today, there's an extra nine points you could add to that scoreboard. As it stands at the moment, Quill, uh, Quinns are up 14 points to 12. And Melbourne, I think, by my count, maybe three, possibly even four kickable penalties they've turned down. Stan, at this point, I think. Yeah, that, yeah. So there'll be a scrum set five metres out from the Quinns try line. Quinn's put in, and the Quinn scrum has been quite dominant today, it must be said. The last scrum they had inside their 22, they made about three or four metres before Van Ziel passed it, and you fancy if they just kept it in there for a little bit longer, they probably could have come away with the penalty. So they've got Quinn's two near, players near on the to left win. of the scrum. Quinns need to win this ball quickly and clear it quickly. Uh, they don't want to be taking it up and picking it drive near their uh, uh, near their try line. Uh, get out of jail, get it downfield. Um, there's only one Melbourne player back. Uh, that would be the better strategy. So they've set up with a 2-4 split here, have Quinns, two backs on the left, and... It's Billy Valentini who's got that big left foot who's first receiver on the left. You fancy he might go to him, although if the scrum wheels to the right, Breen with the right boot can kick to the right touch line. But they go to Valentini, and as easy as you like, he pumps it into the left touch, and Sonny, the fullback, thought about the quick throw. Opted against it, so Melbourne will have the, the line out 40 minutes. 
is out from the Quinn's try line. And that's the beauty, isn't it, Stan, of having a left foot, right foot kicking combination in your back line. The ability to kick either side of a scrum like that. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And uh, Valentini's excelled. That's the second uh, great touch finder he's uh, executed for Quinns and to get them out of their defensive zone. Orchard with the throw. He finds Noah, Tulla, Vaivai. Ooh, Hunter Paisami shot out of the line like a gun looking for the shot. We know he does that quite frequently. S.A. Hungana with the ball now. Sonny, acting halfback, finds the other Noah brother. And they take it within five metres of the left-hand touchline. Tulla finds double Atasi. Fijian with flair. Tulla out the back to Vaivai. Can't clear... Valentini's head though, so they've given the ball to the man with the big left boot. And he finds his brother Valentini. And his rifle kick takes play up to the 22. So, well, Billy Valentini with the left foot and Kemu Valentini with the right foot. Yeah, that was a good, uh, good kick from, uh, uh, from Kemu Valentini. Um, scraped it nicely along the line found touch and it's been a while twist. since they've uh, they've had the ball down in this half of the field they've got to try and uh, stop Dixon uh, winning these line outs up he goes again Tulla didn't want to pass through his fly half because the Quinn's defence raced up very quickly so Vi Vi goes to the base of the ruck the new man Davis with the counter ruck there. Nubble Atasi with the carry. Orchard helping out with a quick pick there. Harris thought about helping out. Great counter ruck there by Thwaites. And Noah is forced to clean up at the back. Platt over the top. Can't get the steal, so Vai Vai looks to clear it. Finds the middle of the field to Kimu Valentini. Weighing up his options here. Goes to the pass instead and finds a Fisa. And we know how dangerous he can be in open space. And he'll leave the ball for his teammates on just on their side of halfway as Quinn's shifted to the left. And another penalty awarded here to Melbourne. What's the count there, Stan? Well, I've got it at 10-3. Discipline could prove to be their undoing here today for Quince. Despite that, they're still up 14-12 on the scoreboard. So, a host of early tries there. What did we have? Johansson crossed the line first for Quince. Hunganar for Melbourne responded almost immediately. Davis, the reserve prop came up with the second Quinn's try of the game to stretch the lead to 14 points to five. And almost immediately, Austin, the second rower for Melbourne, responded with a try of his own. And we find our scores at 14 points to 12 in this top of the ladder clash. And Melbourne will have the line out throw inside the Quinn's 22. They go long to Noah, the number six. Inside ball finds Li Fao. And they'll have the ball 10 metres out in front of the black dot. Quick pick and go from S.A. Hunganar. Gets it to within five. Angus Arundel all over the ball. And give a pat on the hat, on the, the helmet to the captain there. In that very distinctive ponytail and headgear of Angus Arundel. Well... Great work over the ball there by the Quinn's captain to generate the penalty. And Breen kicks it into the commentary box. Yeah, that's good and clearance from uh, Quinn's Breen. will have the throw 40 metres out. There's a player down in backfield for Quinn's here. So they're a bit reluctant to take the line out. Quinns as they wait to see what the issue is. I fancy it's the replacement prop Davis who has a suck of the inhaler. Platt finds Thwaites. 
Breen, Lloyd Johansson crashing it up in midfield. Van Ziel slows it up a little bit, finds Breen again, and they go for the inside ball. And Valentini is being used in midfield, despite being the wing. His brother with the carry now, Kemu. Billy Valentini again. Brother, brother, brother. We're out now. Breen out the back. Lloyd Johansson, beautiful pass. And the hooker, Platts, hmm. tried to get a little bit too fancy and has thrown the forward pass. Just a little bit too anxious, I think, G. Um, they worked, I think that's only the third time in this match that Quinns have actually worked more than three or four phases. Uh, and they just needed to be a little bit more patient. It was Hilter Skilter as that ball was travelling along the back line. Uh, and there was no, no need to panic. There were gaps there, uh, better control of the ball. Uh, and um, uh, they just need to retain it just a little bit longer before working it wide. So they've set up on the scrum here, Melbourne, with all of their backs on the right-hand side. Watch out for Big Arthur here in the orange boots in Jersey 25. He is a monster. And there's a turnover there. Samay Collios picks it up at the back of the scrum. They go out the back to Breen. Lloyd Johansson with the wide cut. Finds Valentini. Billy Valentini brushes off one, brushes off two, gets into the backfield. Billy Valentini, one to beat. He will do it. Oh, no. Wow. He has bombed it. What a desperate tackle there. I'm trying to find out which man it is. I fancy it might be Leota, but Billy Valentini did everything to score that try except put it down. Yeah, bad error, but uh, uh, a great break. Used his speed, sidestep, jinxed his way past two or three players, uh, going for the line, went for the big dive. As he was diving, it slipped from his grasp. Uh, and that, what, that, that happens in, in, in rugby. Um, those opportunities have got to be taken. And uh, it was unfortunate that ball is... No, it's not greasy, it's not slippery. Uh, rugby balls these days have got a good per, a porous uh, surface on them. Uh, hence, the ball is uh, easily caught and passed. Uh, but on that occasion, I'm not sure he slipped, gee, did he, did he slip then? Or? Uh, I fancy it might have been a, a hand from Leota in the tackle, which spilt the ball for him but uh, it was desperate defence whoever it was from Melbourne and Tulla a messy scrum again for Melbourne Vi Vi kicks it back I can only assume that's half time and what an exciting finish to the half stand well I just wonder if that's maybe some uh, cheeky tactics there from coach Cliff Viliamu from Quinns keeping the Melbourne boys out there on the field a little bit longer than they needed to be Nevertheless, here come Quinns now. And there's just the one change to the starting 15, I believe, and that was the prop Dean, who went off in the first six minutes of the game with an ankle injury, and he was replaced by Davis. And Davis with the tight head scrum win and the try all within the first 90 seconds of him taking to the field. So he's had a whale of a game already. And it'll be Vi Vi, the fly half from Melbourne, getting us underway with the short kick over the top of the Bote's head. And Melbourne, well, got the ball straight away. Vi Vi down the short side. Cutout pass finds the touchy. And both teams struggling already today with those uh, restarts, Stan. And we're just having a few audio issues at the moment, so apologies if you can't hear Stan. Talk, talk. Stan, can we hear you? This is a good opportunity here. We'll see what uh, Melbourne have got planned. Quinns have won the line. And straight off the back, Melbourne go charging into the 22. Nubalatasi with the carry, held up high by Tarfau and Collio in tandem. They go left, behind the back of Noah. They find big Arfa, the winger, and Arfa breaks one tackle, takes it within five. Tulla, short ball, finds Harris. Harris gets it within one metre. Pick and go there from Essay. 
Down the short side, looking for Arthur again. Gets the offload back in field. And Arthur is unable to hold it on the first attempt. So they've lost about three metres on the play. They'll slow it down and go back to what they do well. And that's the pick and go. And Orchard assumes responsibility for that. Noah doesn't get his hands on it. But his brother at first receiver does when Tuller goes for the pass instead. Tuller calling forwards around. Finds Noah, the brother. And they've worked it to within two metres here. They go back down to the left. The cut out to Orchard, the hooker. And Orchard with the big left arm. The referee's going to consult the touchy here. But that looks to me as though it's a try to the hooker from Melbourne. Yeah, what it looked like he got the ball down. Uh, they're just seeing whether he uh, didn't lose it over the line. Um, but uh, very good uh, play by Melbourne there. They varied the options. Uh, pick and drive, went the short side at the breakdown, worked it to the blind side. Uh, the all had, had all the go forward. Uh, Quins were on the back foot. Um, uh, they just couldn't press an error, and uh, the try has been awarded. That takes the scores to 17-14, and Melbourne have hit the front for the first time today with Orchard scoring, and all three tries have come through their forwards today. First one through second rower Hungana. His second row partner Austin getting the second, and it's the hooker Orchard's turn now. And how do you like those apples, he says. Three from three for the Melbourne forward pack. And the backs might be feeling a little bit embarrassed here, Stan. Yeah, looks like it. Tuller. Just short there. Tuller taking over the kicking duties after the first missed attempt from Vibai. So scores will remain at 17-14 in favour of Melbourne. Of course, Melbourne still at the top of the ladder with only two rounds to play after this weekend. So as Stan alluded to earlier, very good chance the team that wins this will go on to be the minor premiers this year as Thwaites comes away with the turnover and yet another restart which has been won by the kicking team. That said, the referee... Ollie Kellett has called a knock on there. So Melbourne will get the scrum feed about 40 metres out from their own try line. Yeah, I think the ball was knocked on at the uh, at the restart. Um, but Quinn's just not passing crisply. The, the ball's passes are going astray. Um, uh, they need to settle down fairly quickly because Melbourne are going to take a lot of it, take advantage. They're in a great attacking position now once again. We're not in attacking position, but they're set up uh, with, with an opportunity of, uh, of, of, of taking some options. We haven't seen any box kicks today. Um, and I know there's a big gap uh, over the uh, Quinn's winger. Um, don't see too many box kicks from either side. I haven't seen Van Seal do one all season. Uh, they're more content on moving the ball around and passing it. And I fancy that, is that Eli Vole who's come on the field on, on the right wing in place of Ofisa? So it looks like there has been a change by Quinns at halftime. And that's Scrum again. It's proving to be a bit of an Achilles heel for Melbourne. And as you've said, Stan, they've tried to kick it over the head of the new man, Vole. But Vole gets back. First touch of the game and Vol breaks into the backfield. No one in support though. He's trying to buy time for Kemu Valentini. Finds Breen instead and Breen works it inside the 22. Three Unicorns players try to get the gang tackle but he gets to ground. Van Ziel, Hunter Paisami on the hard line. Crashing it up. Van Ziel looks right. Goes to the new man Davis. The substitute prop and he's hit hard in a two-man tackle there. They go out the back, and there is Verbote crashing it up. Looking to go right again. Kemu Valentini looks in. Show and go. To the right they go through Thwaites, and he's hit hard by S.A. Hungana. 
on the short line is Verbote again. Verbote playing in the second row, usually a back rower, but moved into the two row this week. And it's his second row partner, Coco, who takes the hit up on this occasion. They go wide left. Breen, an uncharacteristic error from the fly half. Finds the offload, does. Oh, wow. Well, Arthur had an opportunity there, the big wing from Melbourne, to take advantage of the knock-on from Breen. He tried to get the offload away, but uh, it's all gone to waste on, here, and Quinns will get the scrum feed 25 metres out, Stan. Well, that was an opportunity there for Melbourne too when Bream dropped the ball. Uh, he just had to pick it up and put his ears back, but um, uh, again he knocked it on. Perhaps not backing his speed That was the there. first time we've seen uh, G uh, uh, with Quinns with some momentum and confidence in their catch and pass. Uh, they were nicely aligned. The ball travelled back and forth across the field twice and... Um, uh, some gaps started to appear to have Melbourne on the back foot for only the third time in this match. Uh, we've seen uh, Melbourne scrambling uh, in defence. And Billy Valentini goes to halfback in a special play, which gets him to carry over the top of Vivi. Vai Vai. They go through Coco, and Coco <laughs> crashes it up and breaks one tackle to advance the ball well inside the 22. Van Ziel digging. But Nabalatasi, the number seven from Melbourne, has generated the the, uh, the penalty at the breakdown there after uh, not enough support there when Coco went on that charging run. So Melbourne have been let off the hook here. And Vivi Vai will look to clear the ball up to the halfway line and relieve some of that pressure that Quinns have been applying to their try line. And Vol, I think, has kept it in here. The flag hasn't gone up, so it's play on. And Ollie Kellett's called the penalty here to Melbourne. I'm not quite sure what that's for. What's that? Obstruction? Crossing? You know what that's for, Stan? Um, it, it may have... No, look, I didn't see. I thought he might have dived, dived and handled the ball on the ground, but he wasn't tackled, so I'm not really sure why that ref, why that penalty came. We're not mic'd up to the referees, so we can't uh, clarify some of these decisions for your viewers. So but, they opt uh, for whatever the it was. Uh, it's setting Melbourne up uh, again uh, in an attacking uh, attacking zone. And there looks to be a change. Now will this I go to the back, uh, G? Fitzgerald, I think Fitzgerald is on at prop. So there's been a change to the forward pack. They find, well, they were trying to find SA Hungana at the back of the line out, but it was stolen by Coco. And Quinns have the ball five metres out from their own try line with Breen in the pocket. And Breen, with that trusty right boot of his, will take play up to about 25 metres out from their own line. So I'm just trying to find this, uh, who this substitution is, but it looks like McKenzie... Oh, sorry. Yep, McKenzie in jersey number 29 has entered the fray, and I fancy he might be on for Harris, Stan. Mm. So both starting number ones have been replaced. Mackenzie on for Harris. And they find Noah at the front of the line out. Ollie Kellett's got his arm extended for a penalty advantage here. Tuller goes down the short side. He finds Luessi. And we'll go back after a knock-on. Playing advantage. So another substitution as well for Melbourne. It looks like the winger Luessi is on for Leota. Nope. Arthur. The other winger, I fancy. And referee now having a chat uh, about these numerous penalties that Quinns are giving away. Uh, particularly... Um, uh, in their 22. Uh, this penalty counts embarrassing for Quinns. I've got it at 13 
four, and uh, you just can't win games giving away silly penalties. As Melbourne will probably pop this into the corner uh, to set up a rolling maul or throw the bat ball out uh, uh, to their back of their line to roll it off and head straight for Bream or um, uh, Johansson. Well, we did see that in the first half. There was a trick play where they went to, I think it was, you're right, SA at the back with big Noah, the number eight, curling around the back of the line out, trying to run directly at Breen. But as you can see, Eli Vol has moved into that second defender position, perhaps hiding Breen a little bit wider in the defensive line. And they go to Austin at the middle of the line out, set up the mall, and advancing it well. They've got all the momentum here. And breaking away is Orchard. Peeling off the back of the line out. And what a peach of a try from Orchard. Now an excellent try by uh, the Unicorns. They, uh, uh, they had it planned. They worked it well. Um, rolling maul. Peeled away nicely. Uh, broke through the fractured uh, Quinn's uh, defence. They weren't posting up there. Quite an easy try in the end. Uh, they didn't have to work hard for that. There was no pick and drive. Just a simple, basic um, rolling maul, peeling off, ball under arm. Thank you very much. So Orchard gets his second for the game. And all four tries for Melbourne have been scored by the big men. SA Hunganar with the first. Austin with the second. And both tries in the second half coming through their hooker, Orchard. And... Well, they went to the break trailing, and you made a good point at the start, Stan, that Quinns have led at halftime in every match this season. But that wasn't the case. Oh, sorry. They, that was the case at halftime, up 14 points to 12. And I'm not sure what was said at that huddle uh, by Coach Tumai Edwards to the Melbourne men, but they've come out and really assumed control of this game with two quick scores. 22 points to 14. Was that kick successful? I missed that, Stan. Yep. 24-14, I should say. So now Melbourne with the 10-point lead as Breen gets us underway. Tuller, the halfback, opts to exit straight away and takes the ball just beyond halfway. That restart given, didn't give Quinns any opportunity whatsoever to contest uh, and an easy clearance there. Uh, Quinns just seemed to have lost their mojo a bit uh, at the moment, I saw some heads drop uh, when that try was scored. Um, good line out win. Breen. Out the back goes Kemu Valentini. He bumps off one and he's hit hard by Leota. And that has forced the knock on. And look at the taps that are coming Leota's way. Aren't they excited by that hit? Such a dangerous player, Kemu Valentini. And... Leota's giving away about 15 kilos there, but that's an inspiring tackle he put on. So Davis, the reserve prop, having a word to the referee before this scrum, perhaps drawing his attention to some illegal binding that might be going on in that front row. Melbourne have the feed. Good scrum there. Tuller takes it off the back, puts it on the right boot. Sunny, the fullback, chasing hard. Kemu in the backfield. Long ball into the middle, looking for Paisami. Very dangerous sort of play, and he loses his footing and a chance here for a turnover. But Platt to the rescue. And Platt dishes it off to the new man on the field and Quinns trying to run it from their own quarter have been punished and Melbourne will have a, uh, a line out 25 metres out Wow what a uh, suicide pass that was uh, throwing a long loping pass back into uh, almost your in goal area to get out of jail uh, very brave execution uh, attempted there by, uh, uh, by the winger Fancy Asafalau might be on here, Stan, at inside centre. So he's replaced the former Wallaby, Lloyd Johansson, as Tuller finds Vivi. Looks in, goes himself, 
And Vai Vai gets it up to the 22. And you <laughs> slow ball indeed. It's Luessi with the pick and go. Tuller at the base goes to the left. He finds Big Noah, the number eight. And they've maintained possession here. Tuller. Austin. Arundel tries to get the steal, but he's collapsed at the base of the ruck. Noah again with the carry. And Quinns are making a mess of that breakdown as the new man comes on in jersey number 29. We'll try to find out which player that is for you in a moment. Mackenzie in 29, the front row for Melbourne. SA Hungana now with the carry. There goes Mackenzie, the new man, with the pick and go. Tuller finds the prop Harris. Pick and go there from Austin. They're within about two metres of the line. And all the forwards very close. They're appealing for a try here. And the referee has blown it up saying it's held up. And last man up there, who's that? Austin, the second row, with that last pick and go. Well, they're Quinn's, looking dangerous uh, when they're keeping it in the forwards, don't they, Stan? Yeah, yeah. Melbourne have now uh, uh, have got the gist of the way to win this game, and that is keep it tight, work it through the forwards, uh, work the phases up, take uh, the short side uh, in attack, keep pressure on Quinns. Quinns are on the back foot. Uh, for most of the second half and um, Melbourne not going around or over the top of Quinns uh, kicking the ball over the top or going around just work it nicely through the forwards and take the options that's where their tries have come from and that's the way uh, I think they're going to play the rest of this game now apologies in advance so there have been a few changes on the field but the jerseys that uh, the players are running out with don't actually corresponds with what we've been given for um, the match day 23 here so apologies if we get any names wrong and I know there's a lot of family members watching not just from Victoria Stan but uh, from New Zealand, Fiji, Samoa we had some people tune in last week from South Africa someone in a, at Heathrow Airport was watching the game so viewers from right around the world tuning into this game and apologies if we get any of the names wrong we do try our best here, but uh, often the team sheets provided to us aren't um, the same as the... don't sync up exactly with the Pretty the important uh, scrum here for Quinns if they can hold them. Noah off the back, charging. Quick pick and go there. I'm not sure who it is, but referee Kellett in his 200th match has called another held-up effort from Melbourne. Yeah, an easy, another easy one for Melbourne. Uh, held in the back, and Noah just picked it up from number eight uh, and thundered past uh, uh, the defence. The um, uh, Quinns, uh, the Van Sile, just couldn't do anything about uh, Noah coming at him. But uh, he's actually saying now that it's been held up. So that scrum. I thought, Since I thought he was over there. The Gee, frame. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well. Since McKenzie's entered the fray for Melbourne, the scrum, which was probably pretty dominant by Quinns in the first half, we saw a great shove that last one, and McKenzie seems to add a bit more stability here for Melbourne as Noah hands off to Tulla. Vivi to the line. Looks for Sonny on the inside ball. Sonny the fullback, two metres short. Tulla goes for a run himself, the little number nine. All eight forwards crowded around the back as S.A. Hungana looks for his seconds. And he's held up about a metre short. And, well, it's buried under a pile of bodies there. And that to be a turnover, surely. Yep, collapsed mall stand. And Quinns have done a fantastic job to withstand this mountain of possession that Melbourne have had in the last five minutes. And finally, a little bit of reward with a collapse mall resulting in a Quinn scrum. The Quinns have just got to be patient here, win the ball and exit as quickly as they can. They've got to get out of this uh, uh, attacking uh, zone of Melbourne. Uh, 
They've been exiting well. We've seen Valentini's brothers and uh, Bream save Quinns, get them out of jail. Um, they need to do it quickly and precisely here. The new man on for Quinns at halfback is Isaac Adams feeding the scrum now. Isaac Adams making his first grade to boo, so well done to the young man. He comes on for Van Zeel. And, well, as a halfback, I don't know if you want to be coming on when your scrum's under a little bit of pressure five metres out from your own line, but... It certainly puts pressure on Isaac. He's been playing a great rugby uh, in the reserves. In fact, he's a bit of a utility back. He plays at uh, anywhere in the back line. Uh, they threw him into scrum half uh, midway towards the end of the season, and uh, he's been relishing the position. Be very interesting to see how he goes under pressure here. A lot of pressure on this young man. Big shove from Melbourne. They get it out to the new man, Asafalau, who crashes it up. Breen sitting in the pocket, but it's the cheeky pick and go from number 19, who will try to find out. Looks like Jazik. And eventually they get it to Breen. And Luessi, did he touch that before it went out? No. Oh, yes. So an error there from the new man from Melbourne, the Wessie, the left winger in those fancy orange boots of his. You can't hide from your mistakes when you wear boots like that, Stan. That was fortuitous there, uh, G. Um, the clearing kick from Bream was just touched by the Melbourne player. Uh, and Quinns now have an opportunity to try and secure some uh, possession and get through some phases. Uh, they're missing uh, Gus uh, Hamilton and Zach, Wilson, uh, Zach Dixon, their money men in the line line out but uh, it's been quite secure on their ball it's Melbourne's throws that have been a little bit wayward so they look to Thwaites at two he gets it Isaacs clean pill oh and the pass goes to the back shoulder by Breen and well he doesn't make too many errors but on that occasion that pass was probably a little bit too far behind the intended receiver Collio and suddenly Melbourne have got another scrum feed within 20 of the Quinns try line. Now it'll be interesting to see what attacking shape they put here. Middle of the field where they go 3-3 split, 5-1, 4-2. It looks like they're going to put five backs on the left and on the right Leota is the only man. Although Sonny the fullback is floating behind the middle of the scrum. So options him for him to go to the left or to the right. Perhaps it'll depend on the wheel of the scrum. The, the, Tuller the feeds it, wheels go. left. Vai Vai goes for a cutout and finds Lee Fowl. Tuller to Austin, who's standing very flat-footed there. Tuller finds the new man to Silla in Jersey 20. Go back to the left, and Noah from a standing start makes about one metre over the ad advantage line. Tuller again, taking it to the line is Vivi. Vai Vai. Tuller finds Austin. Great shot there by Jazik, the new man from Quinns. Nice low chop. Tupo getting involved with the dirty work now for Melbourne. Pick and go. And let's see if they keep it up the jumper like they've done whenever they've made it within 10 of the line. Looked like a bit of a slap down there. The referee's not sure which way to call it. Shot put on by Verbote. And it's gotten a bit messy all of a sudden. Eventually the whistle goes. And there's a couple of Melbourne men down. 24-14 to Melbourne. Penalty 22 metres out. Dead in front. Will they eventually now, or will they finally take the three points, Stan? Well, it's all 14. They've, uh, Quinns have given away 14 penalties and only been awarded four to themselves. Uh, the scoreline, so four is a lucky number. And uh, quite rightly, Melbourne will go for the sticks here. They've had so much uh, pressure on Quinns, they need to come away with some reward. And uh, I think that's what they'll do. 
a whole raft of changes out there at the moment. So a lot of high jersey numbers out there. You don't often see a, a jersey number 29 on a footy field, but we've got a 25, a 24, a 29 commentator's nightmare stand. But we'll yeah. try to get those names for you folks. Uh, as Vivi, yeah. Vi, well, he was relieved of the kicking duties early in the match and uh, he's taking it back off Tuller. And he adds three points to the scoreline. So 27 points to 14, I make it. Melbourne leading Quinns. Quinns now have got to throw caution to the win. Uh, they've got to really start throw the ball around and try and go around this Melbourne back line. There's no use taking it up front and trying to grunt out uh, the ball through the forwards. Uh, another long restart from Bream gives plenty of time. Doesn't put uh, Quinns the opportunity to put them under pressure as I think it's Noah comes down that touchline. Uh, Luesi has been a judge to have gone into touch there. So last time they kicked it long to Tuller. Tuller opted to kick for touch. On this occasion, passed it to the Fijian winger Luesi. And Luesi, his second error of the match, is coming onto the field as a replacement. It's his first game back in a few weeks, Luesi. So probably just trying to find his rhythm. Thwaites with the win. Isaac Breen finds Vol. Isaacs out the back to Breen. Second man played a Hunter Pice Army. Hunter tucks it under the wing and goes. He's tackled about 22 metres out and a knock on by Jezik relieves the pressure for Melbourne. Not what you want when you make it within 22 for the first time in a long time, Stan. No, this handling's been uh, very, very poor today from Quinns. Far too many turnovers, far too many penalties. Uh, it's crippling them. Uh, they're losing a little bit of confidence. Although, uh, when they catch and pass it and run onto the ball, uh, it looks good. But then, the invariable knock-on comes. Now, there seems to be a bit of a positional change for Quinn. So, despite wearing jersey 15, Hunter Paisami appears to be playing outside centre. And Kemu Valentini has switched position, so he's playing fullback. Big carry here from number 25. Who have we got here? Afa to crash it up. And there's a turnover. Isaacs, wild pass left. Finds Vol. Slow ball here. Hand in the ruck. So, well, haven't seen that arm go up too many times today. But finally, Quinns get a penalty. It's the first penalty Quinns have had in this half. Let's hope they use it intelligently. Get some good length in this kick. Little option here but to kick it to touch with the boys being down by 13, the Quinns boys. So Breen pumps it long and Quinns will have the line out about 10 metres out. What's your tip here, Stan? Possibly a maul, maybe through the backs. Well, Quinn's rolling mall has been very, very good when that's well organised. Without Dixon or, um, uh, or Hamilton. Gus Hamilton, uh, I'm not sure what here, but they're going to... Number 18, they're Fitzgerald talking about is it. on. So I think the whole reserve bench has been cleared. Them all. And here comes the mall now. The new man, Fitzgerald, at the back has got the ball. Coming through, though, is Austin for Melbourne. And I think he's got his hands on the ball here, so they'll be desperate to get it out. Otherwise, it'll be a turnover now that it's collapsed. And Austin, take a bow, son. The second row from Melbourne had his arms all over that ball. And the Quinn's steam train couldn't get moving out of the station. And Melbourne will have a, a scrum 10 metres out from their own try line and an opportunity to relieve pressure here. Yeah, Melbourne should get out of jail here. That's the second time Quinns have used the rolling maul only to see uh, uh, it not, not collapse but go to ground uh, and uh, lose the turnover as the maul is formed. Um, 
need to work. I thought there was a truck and trailer in there actually, so Quinns may have got out of jail uh, and not uh, given away a penalty. Well, the trees are casting long shadows on the ground here out at Harlequins, but it's been a beautiful day, plenty of sunlight, no wind to speak of at all. And Tulla, the halfback for Melbourne, feeds a great scrum here from the reserve pack. I think there's about five new faces on, but doesn't matter because Afar goes for a damaging run and the little chip and chase is knocked on. And an opportunity to counter-attack here for Quinns, but that was very dangerous there. When he gets moving, Big Arthur is hard man to stop. That's the second big carry we've seen from the man in jersey number 25 today. And you'd be forgiven for thinking he's a number eight with the size of him, but he's been used very effectively on that right wing for Melbourne today. Yeah, and that was a great bust up down through the middle. A great bust. Um, something more should have come of it. But uh, just went to ground. So, Quinns with the midfield scrum. Young Isaacs to feed in his first grade debut. Quinns with the 4-2 split. Four backs on the left-hand side, two on the right. So, options either way. And... Good shove there from Melbourne, and Collio doesn't even have a chance to run with it. He gets snapped straight away. They go right. Breen. Show and go from Breen. He's beaten one, beaten two. Eventually brought down 40 metres out. Isaacs goes right, finds Hunter Paisami. Eli Vol, the new man on the field, crashes it up, places and goes. Isaacs feeds Breen. Show and go from the fly half. Isaacs goes out to the new man. Valentini with the cutout finds his brother, Billy Valentini, and it takes three men to get him over the touchline, but that looked dangerous from Quinns there, Stan. It was a good, uh, a good counter-attack from Quinns there, and Valentini, using his uh, body weight, just bundled into touch. I think Quinns made good use of that uh, play there by working the ball through the hands and um, just caught Melbourne napping a little bit, a little bit flat-footed in the, in the defence. Now there's a man down for Melbourne here, one of the props, I fancy. And the game will be stopped momentarily as the water boys earn their money coming out onto the field. Well, the scores are 27 points to 14 in favour of the Unicorns. And after the performance they put in last week against Box Hill, Stan, were you expecting them to be leading at this point of the match? Well, traditionally, Quinns, unfortunately, in the second half, uh, have given away and leaked a lot of points. Um, and so it's been in this case. But Melbourne should be much further ahead. Uh, they missed uh, penalty shots. Uh, three opportunities... Um, uh, with the line in front, they've fallen with the ball bobbing forward. We saw Bill Valentini lose the ball over the line. Uh, it's been a game of missed opportunities, um, but Melbourne uh, have asserted much more pressure. They've been better in defence as we see the ball travelling now, and they'll be looking to clear this from the breakdown, I suspect. A new man, Tui, the reserve hook is on, but Orchard, the starting hook, is also on, so I'm not quite sure who's been taken off here for Melbourne as they find touch 35 metres out. The score, 27-14. Quinn's yet to score in the second half. First half tries to Lloyd Johansson at 12, and Davis, the reserve prop. And since half-time, they've been very quiet indeed as... Verbote leaves the field and his place has been taken by Walsh. So Walsh in jersey 16 comes on to the field for Quinns and that throw isn't very straight. And coming away with it is Leota for Melbourne. Tulla with the box kick. And there's no one home here for Quinns. Hunter Paisami forced to rush. And he's going to run it here. Very dangerous. He breaks one tackle, two, oh. and advances it up to halfway. Isaacs goes down the short side through Breen. Breen takes it to the line, and they've done a very good job from the counter-attack there. 
good counter shove. That's the penalty, surely. The arm is extended, so Breen does a little bit of dirty work. Isaacs goes out to Jazik, the new man. Isaacs again, quick service to Paisami, looking to bring the Valentini brothers into the game as Asafalau gets one of his first carries of the game. Isaacs, happy to plug the short side, but that pass is the pass of a debutant. And it will matter little because referee Oli Kellett will return for the original penalty. But you fancy Stan, they're going to have to score pretty quickly if they have any hopes of winning this game. Yeah, and they're just not showing any continuity, uh, G, in their, uh, in their play. Um, we've seen they'll probably go for the line here. Uh, the rolling mall hasn't worked. Um, uh, their backs while run, are not running onto the ball in the inside halves, although Bream's doing the best he can to create space. And um, they've got to throw caution to the wind. They've got to throw the ball around, hope some gaps come for their very speedy back line that really hasn't uh, uh, measured up or performed today as they should as in previous matches. Jazik and Thwaites are two options. They go to Thwaites. Isaacs feeds Breen. Asafalau out the back to Valentini. Short ball to Ty. Isaacs back down the short side. Breen, he's got Hunter Paisami out the back. Second man play. Draws and passes, finds Billy Valentini. The quick pop pass back to Breen. And suddenly they're showing a little bit of razzle-dazzle here as Isaac on the hard line. Platt crashes it up. Being held up in the tackle low by Big Affa. Another penalty here for being offside, and they'll have little option but to take a tap or a scrum. You fancy they don't have time to amass points from penalty goals. And that's exactly what they do. Thwaites with the... Well, he's hit pretty high there. Referee hasn't called it. Charging from out of uh, the heavens is Asa Falau. He came from about 20 metres back for that carry. Isaacs goes digging. Jazik with the run. He crashes it up about one metre short. Isaacs, Hunter Paisami, never thought about passing that pill. And they've done well to slow it down here. Penalty goes up. I fancy this might be a yellow card here. That's been three penalties in a row inside the, the 22 for Melbourne. And he's shown the card. Let's find out which number that's for. Repeated infringements. The fullback, Sonny. So Sonny will... Slowly walk to the sideline. And with a man in the bin, a couple of options here for Quinns as Breen discusses with his forward pack. Of course, we can't re restart the game until Tupo, the outside centre for Melbourne, is fixed up by the physio. Well, this last couple of minutes has been uh, uh, the best phase of play, I think, in the match for Quinns. Yeah. Uh, they were showing some great enterprise, took opportunities. They've and they've gone left. Penalties. Sorry to interrupt. Quickly opened up. And Samay Collio is over the line. He looks like he's held up, though. And pick and go there by Jazik, I fancy. And they've got their first score of the second half. Now let me find out who that is. It's one of the new faces on the field. I think it might be Fitzgerald, in fact. Fitzgerald. Is it Fitzy? Good yep. Fitzy, yes. It is Fitzy. And very little time to celebrate. The Quinns boys have run back quickly over to halfway, keen to get keep the, the game moving here as Breen lines up for the kick. So that takes scores to 27-19. And a very important kick here for Breen. And Breen nails it, so... Well, let's open up the game now. Absolutely. 27 plays 21. A converted try here can win it for Quinns. And... Well, we'll, we'll see the drama in, uh, as we did in the first game, uh, where it was decided in the last uh, minute or so, the first uh, match between these two sides, uh, G, where Quinns uh, squandered their lead... Uh, with a very, very poor decision of kicking the ball out, thinking it was time and it wasn't. 
They're always close these games, and so it proves again as Vivi takes the restart. 27-21, I make it. And he finds, oh, almost a catastrophe there. It was going straight down the throat of the new man, Isaacs, but it was rudely intercepted by Fitzgerald. Now be patient, Quinns. You need to be patient here to have a, an opportunity. Breen, Hunter Paisami. Here's a guy who can break the, the game open. Runner. He's grabbed on the collar. Referee doesn't call anything. Well, now he does. A delayed penalty. And... Yep. Eventually Yay. giving the penalty to Quinns for a... A horse collar shot on Hunter Paisami, but he's certainly one player who can break the game open for Quinns. Wow, that's the fourth penalty in a row to Quinns. They've doubled their, their penalty count. And there's a turnover already after only holding it for two phases. And Melbourne, perhaps looking to slow the game down a little bit here as Nabalatasi, who's had a very strong game, takes the carry. To Isala at the base of the ruck, but he's been pushed over it by Tuller, who's passed to Orchard. Tuller screaming at his forwards, getting them back up off the ground and into the game. Tui tries to get a carry. Yeah, Melbourne uh, trying to work the clock down here. To Isala on that occasion. Navalatasi, the Fijian number seven, with a, his second carry of the set. Noah, who's had a standout game on this occasion with the carry. Doing a great job of slowing it down here as they get up to seven phases. Nabalatasi again with the third carry. Tuller looking at the referee in hope more than anything that this will be the last play. Quinn's desperate for a turnover here. And Tuller kicks it into the stands. And Oli Kellett in his 200th game blows full time and Melbourne retain top spot on the Jewish Shield ladder with a 27-21 win.